Hi guys, this is Lorinda. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at um, painting with a palette knife, or at least how I go about painting with a palette knife. There's no real uh, magic to it. I just load up my palette knife and jump in. Uh, my main goal when I'm starting any new painting with a palette knife with this thick impasto type texture is that I try to load up um, the background and block in all the colors uh, on my canvas first so that I can move on to the detail from there when I do a palette knife painting most of the time I'm doing a wet on wet type technique where I'm painting details right on top of the wet background paint without waiting for it to dry and that's the technique I'm using here as you can see when I'm doing this type of painting I paint the entire canvas all the way to the the edges and the sides I leave um, no part of the canvas uncovered and uh, here you can see I'm coming in with the orange with my huge palette knife really honestly I just wanted an excuse to use this massively huge palette knife I bought it recently thinking that it'd be great for some of my larger canvases and um, I just wanted to use it and it really does a very good job at adding in a whole bunch of paint all at once onto your canvas. You can see here now that once I got the major part of the paint on I came back in with my smaller palette knife and I'm adding in the detail behind the top of the pineapple and also adding in some texture to the canvas. I didn't like the whole one directional um, paint that the way it was going when I had started here so I decided to change it. That's the great thing about art is that if you don't like something you can just change it. It's kind of a metaphor for life although a lot of things in life seem a lot harder to change than paint on a canvas. You can see here I'm finishing up adding in this orange texture back here and then detailing out the the line between blue and orange. I had to be careful not to mix colors uh, as I was going along here because the paint is very wet and mixes quite easily. Uh, and taking advantage of that fact, I am going back in and adding in some yellow texture to my background. It's the same color of yellow that I'm going to be using on the body of the pineapple. And so I decided I wanted to add a little bit in to the background so you could see that uh, texture that direction of the paint a little bit better. I actually really struggled with this because the orange seems to have a much stronger or deeper pigment than the yellow and it kept eating up my yellow color. It would blend in too quickly and almost to where I couldn't see it anymore. And so I went back over this several times with the same yellow and the same strokes just trying to get it to to work the way I wanted to before um, moving on. My next step was adding in this uh, shadowing of the pineapple on the wall behind or the background behind. Um, I decided to use the same direction as the paint was already laid on the canvas, but then midway I actually changed my mind on this too and decided to make it look uh, like the pineapple or go, my paint to go in the same direction that I wanted the paint to go on the actual pineapple so it kind of uh, is a little might look a little strange or I struggled with this because I kind of wanted it to line up with the way I had the paint on the wall but in the end I was happy with how it turned out um, getting that little bit of red in there and kind of cross hatching this paint so that it so that you could really tell the the shadowing that I was trying to portray there in the background. And even after this I go back in again with the yellow and try to make that contrast even greater between the shadowing and the regular background with my yellow. So uh, again changing and working on the fly. This is kind of the way I, I work. I don't really have a clear idea of exactly what I'm doing going into it. Uh, I kind of make it up as I go along and, and I think that is just my way as an artist. I'm sure other artists go in with a plan. Uh, I am not one of them. So uh, here you can see that I'm adding in some shadow 
along the tabletop too, the blue I'm contrasting with a little bit of purple to show the shading going all the way up to the wall and I get this in rather quickly and even mix some of it into my background or my tabletop the rest of it as well. I really enjoy playing around with the paint when I'm painting with a palette knife. It's very relaxing to me to to mix these paints and kind of uh, see where they take me. Here I'm just removing the excess paint from the actual pineapple before I move on. And here we go. Finally made it to the actual pineapple. I'm blocking in the color here of the yellow. This part's not too exciting. It's just adding in a pretty thick layer of yellow on there. Now, if you want to try painting with a palette knife, you don't have to use near as much paint as I do. I just really enjoy that thick texture on there and being able to go in and manipulate it. By the time I'm done with the canvas, you can't see any of the texture of the actual canvas behind. It is just paint thick on the canvas. And, and that's how I, I like it. I just like that kind of texture. You'll even see down here at the bottom as I'm putting in paint, I actually had a little bit of a problem with my blue mixing in with the yellow. I thought it was a problem at first, but then I decided, you know what? I bet I can use that. And so I just left it and it became shading in the bottom of the pineapple later on. I actually added in more blue even to accentuate that. Here you could see I'm starting to add the, the pattern onto the pineapple. I'm just going back in with orange. Um, the pineapple picture that I was looking at, uh, or the pictures, I looked at several, in order to kind of plan this out, I actually sketched out a pineapple or two beforehand to make sure that I had the idea in my head of what it was going to look like. And it had more of a brownish color in the background, but I didn't really want to add brown. And I thought that the orange would look nice, so that's what I went with. I'm orange, and I'm going to be going back in later and adding more color to accentuate that shading even more. You'll see the pace is going to start to pick up here and we're going to blow through this little honeycomb pattern as quickly as possible here. I just I just load up the edge of my palette knife to do this detail. I just roll paint onto the edge of my palette knife and then work with just the edge adding in the lines um, that I want to see on there. And if I mess up, the great thing about that thick paint is that you can wipe it off and restart in a section, or you can kind of move the paint with your palette knife and add in more yellow to cover up. Uh, I do this a lot, uh, so it doesn't always turn out perfectly the first time, but that's what's great, again, about making your own artwork is that you can manipulate the colors and move them around and change them how you see fit. I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about this style of painting. The impasto style with the palette knife is that it is so malleable and so workable. The paint works with you and um, you can push it around as needed and um, it is just so flexible. Right now I'm going into some detailing on the inside of each of the little sections of the pineapple. I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight, a detail. Uh, at first I started just making little arches over the top of each one, but when I got to looking at a photo of an actual pineapple or a few different photos, I saw that the the highlight was more like a like a starburst from the center, and so that's what I started when I started applying the the whitish yellowish texture um to a larger part of the center and I think it turned out pretty good um, adding that in there and I even created the texture so that when I lifted my palette knife uh, or I added the paint from one of the corners I normally started in one of the corners and then I would lift my knife up from the middle so that that texture showed where the highlight and shadow would be for each part of the 
fruit of the pineapple there, so each section, um, because it really does, um, on the actual fruit, kind of pop up in the middle there. So that's how I decided to go about that. Now we finally get to move on to the crown of the pineapple. Um, the first thing I did was try to underlay a layer of dark shadow. This is a, it looks almost black, but it is actually a green color mixed with a little raw umber um, to create this really um, dark shadowy color. And then I created a, a much lighter green to add into my fronds. Actually, the green that I'm using here is made from the same base colors as the turquoise that I used at the bottom. So I used a light or lemon yellow there with a cobalt blue. Um, and I think the color turned out pretty well and I like that using the same colors to mix, um, even though the shade is different, they still kind of coordinate or go together in a way because you can, I think you can just kind of see the the similarity in the in the undertones of the color. Um, that a lot of times when I'm painting, I will just use a few colors. I'll limit my palette. To just a few colors and try to just use those colors to make all of the different shades that I need for this painting. Sorry there. Sometimes you'll see that I get in the way of my own camera painting. Um, just kind of the nature of it. I tried to get that camera as close to the canvas as possible for this painting. And I think I got them all cut out, but sometimes I even did bump into the camera. So that's a learning curve for me, trying to paint while filming myself. Um, I have to beware of where the camera is at at all times. As we move along here, you can see that I'm getting some of those fronds in now, starting to, and I think it'll jump ahead a little here in just a little while, because I spent a long time uh, adding in these fronds, and actually it uh, was quite a challenge for me at some points trying to get them on there but not ruin the orange background which is still wet behind there. Um, I did run into a few little issues there at the end and had to go back through and clean things up but overall it, it turned out pretty well and luckily since my orange was still wet I could go back in with a clean palette knife and simply remove the green parts from the from on top of the orange where they weren't supposed to be and then go back in with some orange or some yellowish orange and cover things back up. As we move up the crown of the pineapple here you'll see I'm adding a lighter and lighter shades of green and then I am working my way back down through the fronds of the crown to add that lighter green color to the lower fronds as well so that you can see the highlights all throughout the crown. Um, I was actually a little disappointed as I went along here because as I added more and more highlights, I completely covered up the shadowy dark green that I had added at the beginning. And it was almost non-existent by the time I got through adding the light green. So I had to go back through, make that same dark green color again, and go back through and add in my shadow once again. Um, trial and error. That's what art is all about to me. Just trial and error and trying different things. And if something doesn't work out or it doesn't work the way you planned, shift gears and try something else. Um, but I'm really happy with the results. I think the crown turned out beautifully. Now I'm going back through with a, the same turquoise blue, but with less white in it than I used for the tabletop. Um, so it's kind of a darker, a more shadowy color, and that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm now going in and adding the shading to each section of the fruit of the pineapple. Uh, on some parts where I'm at right now, I'm adding in more shading so that you can tell where the light's coming from, which is from the side of the pineapple that I'm on now. It's coming from the opposite side or the left side. The so I'm adding more shading to the right side of the pineapple 
to give it the the look that I want um, following the shadow that's already on the canvas there and then to the middle parts of the pineapple I'm adding in a little bit less of this blue shading but I still added just a little bit to each section because well quite frankly I just liked it so you can chalk that up to artist prerogative I'm not just adding the blue to each yellow section I'm also adding it to the orange lines in between this is just to add that shading because technically the light wouldn't cast a darker shadow on the yellow part than it would on the orange part and so I just wanted to make sure that it looked balanced and I really like the mixture of the orange and the blue them being contrasting colors as we start to wrap up here you'll see me starting to clean up a few things around the edges I want to fix any um, blue that or green that I might have gotten onto the orange background and so you'll see me doing that and signing the corner and that'll be it for this happy little pineapple painting today. If you have any questions about my palette knife painting technique, please feel free to leave them down below or any comments or tips as well. I'd love your tips. If you do this style of painting, uh, what's your favorite style of painting? If you like this video and would like to see more like this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. I am planning on putting out a new video every couple of weeks, so feel free to check back. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I've just been overwhelmed by the support for my new art channel, and I can't wait to see where this goes. Thank you for being a part of that, and I hope that you have an amazing day, and I will talk to you again really soon.